Welcome back to the C Morning Show, everyone. We're up for our first discussion of the day. Now, voice-based content existed before the internet through what you might have heard of as radio. Now, as technology has advanced, now voice-based content has evolved into on-demand content that is accessible through various platforms. One of those is via a podcast or webcast, which has become quite popular in recent years. Now, many of the most popular podcasts in Indonesia are focusing on daily activities or telling stories about life experiences, the good and the bad, the struggles, and also the success. Now, let's further discuss this topic and have a chat with the podcaster himself, who is also a chef, who is also an entrepreneur. Wow, there's a long list of this. And he will share with us behind the scene of a hectic restaurant alive through his podcast, Ray Jensen Radio. And of course, he's the man right here in our uh, studio, in our sofa. Good morning, Ray. Thank you so right, much for being morning. here with us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> happy to be here. Happy to have you. Yeah. A bit early for me, but... I know! <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here <laughs> in the AM. So, you know, we know that you're also very passionate and, and you know, you're a passionate chef. You're yeah. also an entrepreneur. You're, you know, you're opening restaurants and bars and whatnot. Mm. Uh, so, how did the podcast Ray Jansen uh, Radio embarked? So, it was 2019, okay. uh, mid-2019. Uh, I used to... Uh, owns and operate uh, our own Indonesian restaurant okay. in Senopati area, oh. in Jalan Gunawarman. So the restaurant was doing great and um, one of my investors mentioned to me that uh, I need to spend the time more productively because I because the operation was doing so good. So, uh, things are great, you need to get great. busy doing something yeah. else. I just, I just invite my friends, maybe uh, uh, we eat, we right. have a couple of cocktails like, right. yeah. every day. So my investors like, hey, Ray, you're young. You need to be more productive, use your time wisely. And he mentioned that uh, the internet age is coming up. Right. So you need to, uh, your face needs to be seen. But I have no time to do cooking shows at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. Just needs to do a lot of research. Yeah. Uh, so we decided to do podcast. Okay. So in 2019, we, still, we, we never planned to be like the... Mm. FNB, the food and beverage podcast. Mm -hmm. this was, the name is just my name. Right. I'm planning to talk about anything. But right. since we got started by inviting our friends, which almost 100% is in the industry, so it <laughs> becomes what it is today. Right. Yeah, so we discuss about uh, the people behind the FNB industry right. the restaurant, right. the bar, the cafe that uh, maybe you wouldn't know if there's uh, no platform like ours because all the, the food bloggers or content creators usually focus on the product, the right, place, yes. maybe the owners sometimes, but yeah. rarely the men who's, uh, or the ladies who built and work at the business. Thank right. you for saying that. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the men and the ladies. That's right. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, throughout this journey, you started as a, a voice-only podcast. You've yeah. turned this into a video yeah. podcast as well. How did this, because you're available also on YouTube and various other video yeah. streaming platforms. Mm. When did this shift happen? Because Caroline mentioned that, well, if you started in 2019, the pandemic hit not long after. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your journey when that happened. Okay, so uh, six months after we uh, start doing the podcast, uh, I mean, I buy really cheap uh, knockoff microphone. <laughs> uh, I got a couple at, of those. At the <laughs> store and start uh, talking to our friends. Uh, of course, nobody watches it. Right, we got only like what, 60 subscribers okay. for six months. Okay. It's like, oh man, nobody used to do it. <laughs> right? So, uh, but the, unfortunately, the pandemic happened. My restaurants and we decided to close the business. Okay. We opened for three years. And so, and my other businesses, I have a bar at that time in the western part of Jakarta. Okay. It's closed because it's in the mall. Sure. We cannot <laughs> open. So, the only thing I have going on is uh, the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so and uh, my wedding got postponed as well. Oh. So I really have nothing to do besides <laughs> right. uh, selling Chinese food uh, door to door to oh, wow. my neighborhood, right? Wow. Hustling. Okay. So, okay, uh, I have a lot of time on our hands. Why don't we decide to invest in uh, more proper equipment for the podcast mm -hmm. and start doing it more consistently? Mm -hmm. And the podcast grew from there. Yeah. yeah, and we hired a couple of teams now. Right, we have interns as well. well. A really great team. So yeah, it's it's really growing right now. It's a big production now. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. well, we can see by the Don't visual. Be shy. <laughs> yeah. course, it's very well done. Yeah. So I mean, with all the podcasts, it's not 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 only from audio, also uh, video, yeah. visual that we can see. 
What kind of like messages? Because you're saying that almost all your friends, whether that's men or you know female or male, yeah. in the industry itself, mm. they're telling the nitty gritty of making a business, right? Yeah. So is this more to like uh, how to make or to make it in the FNB industry 101? Mm. Or is it what kind of messages that you like to convey to your audiences? I mean, we we discuss about different topics when because. Uh, not only about the business. Okay. Uh, sometimes we invite owners or uh, head chefs or uh, mixologists, mm -hmm. restaurant managers. Mm -hmm. Marketing is very important to discuss and learn how to do uh, the job effectively. But by telling their version of their, their stories. stories right. We didn't try to like, okay, here's the recipe for a successful restaurant. Right. I mean, for me, there's uh, every business is different, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no fixed recipe. Yeah. So uh, by telling stories, hopefully, uh, people who are listening or watching get yeah. inspired and can do their own version out of it. But yeah. when talking about food specifically, you you cannot uh, escape that the fact foods are connected with the culture, of sometimes course. with religion, sometimes with politics. Yeah. So yeah. it has yeah. Yeah. Uh, plenty different avenues to explore. Yeah. yeah, I got free vaccines, so I have free meals for our vaccines throughout the pandemic as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's used right. in very different factors. Yeah. So um, you've obviously uh, learned a lot uh, by doing this. In fact, oh, yeah. I would have to say, Caroline and I have spent time overseas as well. I would say that Jakarta is very unique in the sense that um, its FNB industry is stronger and grows faster than any other country that I've mm. been to or lived yeah. in. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, even in the face of a pandemic, mm. yes, many restaurants did have to close down, mm -hmm. but many of them reopened. In fact, a lot of newer ones oh opened immediately, yeah. not even you know any setbacks. Of course, there were financial setbacks, but not even a setback in the sense of the business center of the form. Once we were allowed to get to restaurants, yeah, everyone was hitting yeah. yeah. F&B places. So yeah. being able to chat with the people behind mm. the industry, behind these businesses, what have you learned about our FNB industry here? I think it's really dynamic. It, uh, I have the same opinion as you that uh, it's pretty mind-boggling to me yeah. that the restaurants keeps opening, opening, even during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of restaurants open as well. That's right. Uh, because they uh, they think that, okay, if we start now, during, when the pandemic is over, we already got some traction. Of course. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So uh, for me, that maybe uh, we discussed this in the most, uh, most recent episode in the radio radio podcast that maybe it's in our culture mm. it's in indonesia or is in uh, southeast asian people who likes to uh what do you call it uh, host <laughs> to yeah, host right, people dinners. to entertain people when they're coming Guilty. to our house <laughs> right and yeah. uh our we are famous for our hospitality of mm -hmm. course yeah. right so and it's quite uh, i think quite a sexy business when mm -hmm. you open a restaurant because yeah. when opening a restaurant you have one big investor right usually but there are also behind him there are so maybe some maybe 10 small investors who right. just like to say like hey come to my restaurant I'm part of this right. Right. yeah That's hey true. come to my restaurant right. okay you should visit my restaurant and you can host your guests, your family, your friends. That's a good point. Uh, serve them good food, good yeah. drinks. And it it becomes food. a leverage, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, you have a car, you have watches, now it's have a, a restaurant. Exactly. As well. That's actually right. good from the business side. I've never really right. thought yeah. of it. I'm pretty sure that you both must knew somebody who owns Oh, a restaurant, I know right? many people that own <laughs> yeah. restaurants. Yeah. I work at many of them. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and in fact, I think it's also a testament at the fact that we are just a culture that loves to eat. Yeah. Right. Uh, we love to be able to say, hey, we went to this new right. spot. Yeah. Especially right. with the era of yes. social media and that we can post right. that we were there. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the contrary, though, I mean, we've seen a lot of a lot of restaurants, bars, you name it, popping mm. up, right? From any range of uh, uh, the the um, the money itself. I mean, it mm. seems that you can find a cheap place and it's also good food, or you can you go to an expensive place yeah. with a great ambiance and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but also, what I see in particular, the culture is they're not very consistent. They're mm. popping up. Mm. They can be up on business for like three months to a year. Yeah. And then people who would start, okay, I'm getting bored of this place. Exactly. Nothing is new and whatnot. I'm going to go to another Looking place. For the new it hot seems spot. even the yeah. market is like that, right? Yeah. They like to go popping here yeah. and there. It's so, really annoying. Man. Exactly. <laughs> As a business owner, yes. You're all, yeah, again, you're a yeah. restaurant owner and whatnot. You have restaurants, you have bars and whatnot. How do you keep the momentum and even the market? Mm. to be always, uh, you know, attractive and sexy for them to come to your premises. Oh, my God. Please. I mean, if I know that, maybe my life will be so much easier. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, uh, you, uh, in the big cities of Indonesia, uh, the, the struggles are almost 
the, uh, is very similar. Okay. And we talk to the business owner and the restaurateurs because uh, they're not loyal because so many places are opening up yeah. and people want to, in a month, they won't go to the same restaurant right. twice. You know, they... Because they want their social media to be attractive too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, like I go next, here, I go here. next place to visit. Yeah. Right. They see a food content creator. Oh, there's a new place. They go there. Right. right. I'm thinking the staying consistent is the number one thing. First of all, your product and your service must be as good as mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because in the restaurant industry, we all we always say we are only as good as our our last service. Mm. Good point. So, right. Right. And the customer always fought with their feet. <laughs> not, not good enough. They, they just right. don't go there. That's right. Right. That's right. Uh, so it needs to be consistent in product and service and marketing. Yeah. Now, because the competition are so fierce, right. but one good thing the pandemic brings that it's the spirit of collaboration. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I think you realize now, like a lot of restaurants and bars and cafe do collapse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, collaboration. Like, okay, I cook in my other friend's restaurant, and next month maybe right. the chef came to my bar right. to do a session. By the way, that's only new to us here in Indonesia. This has been going on for years oh, yeah. in other countries yeah. where, you know, there's a bit more of a sharing our crowds yes. with, right. with each other. This yeah. has only become recent now, and I believe it's just uh, the pandemic happened and it really opened our eyes mm -hmm. to yeah. well, how we can benefit helping each other instead of being in direct competition. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly, and it's not good only for business and exchanging the markets, but only, or, uh, also good for the staff. Yeah. And the team, so they can get inspired other than their boss. Yeah. Right. You know? And marketing yeah. is a very good, uh, good tool also. Sometimes oh, yeah. it's very controversial. Mm. You know, there, we've seen some premises like that. Yeah. Where to an extent, I think mm. it's above and beyond. Yeah. But it really attracted for us to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just old school, but I like, I like going to my regulars. I like finding yeah, a place cute. and a dish that I yeah. like. And I like knowing what I'm going to get. Because with the addition of all of these new businesses, sometimes it's a shot in the dark. And things yeah. don't always look like they look on other people's social media. When you get there and you're like, yeah. Your expectations are, you know, not yeah. met. Then you're a bit disappointed. I, I don't like dealing with exactly that. Exactly with the technology, everyone are. Yes. Everyone now can be become a food blogger, food blogger, food yes. content creator. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, good thing you segued into that. What are your thoughts on this? Because you are actually a chef. So mm. when you talk about this topic or when you post about it, it's legitimate. Mm. But there are anybody with a camera and a mouth these days can be yeah. a food blogger because you can just <laughs> try food and say, oh wow, this is so good. I'm yeah. doing some ASMR. ASMR exactly. But then it's like everyone has different tastes. So they yeah. may not be approaching it from a perspective that is fair for everyone. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think it's good that nowadays because uh, like food content creators are everywhere. Yeah. Now, every time you visit a restaurant, there's someone taking pictures <laughs> do video right, yeah. to upload. Uh, it's good for the restaurant that we can promote. And mm -hmm. sometimes even we can get promotion for free. Right, of right? course. So that, yeah. that's always good. But the thing is, the better food content creators, they know what they're talking about right. and they're right. willing to they're willing to learn about maybe the backstory of the food, the backstory yes. right. of the restaurant, yeah. so that they can inform their uh, followers better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if they just, sometimes what happens when they just food, post the food, oh, it's really good, but taste is really subjective, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, maybe, you know, a food may be too salty for me, maybe it's fine right. for you, right? Right, right. So I think the audience also needs to be more be uh, aware mm -hmm. yeah. that it's very subjective. Sometimes they got paid to say it's the issue. Of course. True. Right? True. And, but I think overall, it's about building a good connection. Yeah. Yeah, usually like way back, uh, chefs and restaurateurs and bartenders usually hate food bloggers oh, yeah. they don't know what they're talking about. Of course. But I think technology also helped that uh, if you want to learn about food, now it's easy. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You can just Google it. Yes. Uh, so I think it helps as well uh, in educating mm -hmm. the content creators, which helps the restaurant. That's a really good point, isn't it? Like back in the day, 
the whole, first of all, the whole restaurant would get entire, completely nervous yeah. when a food critic came into the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, I hate it. I hate this person. Yeah. I hate what they write about restaurant because yeah. they're exactly that, a critic. Right. Whereas nowadays, you don't often see people criticizing food. Yes. In fact, you see it more of a positive. So if you want to take a positive note out of it, people are always saying, hey, this tastes really good. You yeah. should check it out. Yeah. And right. it's up to us as the consumer of this information. For example, I... I get information all the time from social media mm -hmm. by, oh, there's a new uh, area food court that just opened up. Mm -hmm. But I will try it for myself and make my own opinion. Yeah. Right. I think that's why we need to draw the line. Use this stuff for yeah. information, yes. but don't like just believe somebody just because they say yes, something, and right? You know what I hate now? There's a trend going on. Uh, I, I, like anybody, we out of nowhere, give your restaurant a rating. Oh, yeah. Right? What, what is it, right. like a star system yeah. or no, 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 star system out of 10. Oh. Like oh. 8 out of 10. Right. What? On, her, on your scale. Yeah. yeah. What, what, yeah. what is the standard? Do they base yeah. that on something, for example, like a uh, few points for... Or no, 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 like overall, overall. So like oh. yeah. food, <laughs> maybe food, okay, 7 out of 10. Cocktail, okay. 8 out of 10. What are the standards? Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's a thing now. I mean, <laughs> that is, I guess, what they have to face, right, in the mm. industry itself. Yes. Um, you know, facing all of that, though, and you're coming into, you were saying before, um, you know, we begin the talk show, that you're already on your 300 episodes now? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Goodness. So, yeah. past hundreds, guys. <laughs> Investors won't be complaining about him not exactly. doing anything. <laughs> now, what's so uh, what what we like to see in the in the future, especially for the Ray Jensen Radio in the next episodes, what we're we gonna hear? Do you have any you know like um, a timeline for it? Okay, so uh, we are just hope to continue doing and exploring new topics, talking with awesome awesome people in this in Indonesia F&B industry. Okay. Uh, we have we have visited several cities. To talk about the the industries over there in Bandung, we recently came. Are back you from going Bandung. out of Jakarta now? Outbound. Yeah, we recently Yay. came up from uh, came back from Bandung. Okay. To talk, uh, I was cooking there and okay. talk and do uh, several episodes. Nice. We done episode in Bali. We done episode in Aceh. Okay. Maybe we'd like Aceh. to explore the culinary and gastronomy scene there also, mm -hmm. and talking about the people uh, behind it and promoting it. Because the thing is. Uh, during this 300 episode, I've met and uh, learned a lot from interesting people. Right? Yeah. But the yeah. one thing that sticks me is every time I post about the cultural stuff mm -hmm. of Indonesia, mm -hmm. the views are not that good. Oh, really? Yeah. We want to know more about yeah. like the. Yeah, uh, more... that's just my pattern and what right, my right. told me. Because the, actually, one of my dreams is to travel around Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, to explore the gastronomy scene, not only Love the food, that. but the drinks yeah. and the culture. Yeah. And show it to people of Indonesia because I think uh, in the industry we have a huge problem of over relying on uh, imported products. Western mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. So, and that created mm -hmm. a several problem, yeah. especially during the pandemic, the butter, the meat, yes. uh, the salmon, everybody's favorite fish, mm -hmm. all increase in price so highly sure. that yeah. we cannot afford it because we're yeah. too dependent on it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, last year we visited uh, Aceh. We go to Aceh Culinary Festival, which is awesome. Oh, I do wow. a, uh, yeah. I was invited as a speaker there and we explore for two weeks the uh, major, small, uh, major and small cities of Aceh. And we learn so much about food, uh, culture, we we go up in the mountains and do podcasts in the middle of the coffee plantation yeah, to learn about the processing of the coffee. And wow. It's really interesting. You know? Yeah, yeah I mean, the saying food is the main essence of life is true. Because yeah. you yes. know, with, through food you learn cultures, traditions, yeah. Yeah. and heritages and whatnot. So, mm. I mean, through that and hopefully you can be the face of oh, the yeah. Indonesian F&B industry. Not right. only that, but also promoting our culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah I think it's important. Yeah, yeah I think right. it's important. Be yeah, uh, I mean, to learn about Indonesia, yeah. it's so big. Yes. Oh when you're already God. an Indonesian yourself, yeah. can you imagine that? <laughs> oh We're already my Indonesian God. and we still so need to big. learn. So big. I mean, if you look the food of Sumatra or Aceh or Padang, and yeah. you compare it to the food of Bali, it's like two different yeah. countries. Right. Right. Yeah, right. so so much to learn, so yeah. much to explore. To well, we hope that you'll be the person to introduce yeah. them to all of us and those that are viewing your program. And one more thing, though, I just want to say, because you said that you're old school, that you're loyal. 
I'm very loyal too, especially when my friend is DJing, yeah. when he's spinning, <laughs> wherever he goes, where the crowd is going. <laughs> and you're always invited as yeah. well. So before we let you go, real quick, I think you're the right person to give us three culinary, mm. culinary recommendations to eat in Jakarta three. at this point in time. Sure. I know it changes over time, but at right now. Okay, my, top three. one of my favorite restaurants is called Asun Seafood. Okay. Asun, Asun wow. Seafood in, in, in Manga Besar area. Sounds OG. Okay. There you go. Oh. Yeah, it's in Manga Besar. Yeah. I mean, the restaurant people uh, usually don't go to fancy restaurants. Right. Yes. Especially, uh, except when opening or right. the friend, sure. the owner invited yeah. us. Sure. Usually we eat at the OG places. Of course. Yes. Right. Yeah, so this uh, this restaurant, Asun Seafood, is not a popular restaurant. Yes. Okay. And I almost feel reluctant to do this because uh, oftentimes you get crowded and I cannot get a seat. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> a sign that it's really good. When I recommend yeah. something. Uh, so <laughs> they used to be a supplier uh, of live seafood, oh. but they now open a restaurant as well. So because they are supplier, the seafood are cheap. And yeah. they have the fresher stuff. The fresher stuff yeah. and uh, not many, they don't have many menus. Okay. So when you come in, you Simple. choose your fish or lobster or everything. You choose, you want it steam or fried? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I've been there. Have you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My dad is a uh, foodie, by the way. Yes. All right, two more. Yeah, second Two more. One. Okay, second one, maybe the more fancier scale. Uh, I always love a good steak. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sweet. so uh, one be? of my favorite restaurants is Sky. Oh, oh really? Yeah, Sky. They used to be known as a bar. Yes, right. correct. Right, but uh, yeah. one of my friends, Adit, is hired there and reconcept the whole menu mm. and turn it into a steakhouse. I did not know that. Modern, but okay. modern. Okay. Okay. So it's so good. You All have right. it with wine. <laughs> if you have fancy night and out. Seeing and seeing the view, why yeah. not? Yes, why not? Oh my God. So yeah. All right. It's uh, really good, and but it's all the time. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to call you for a table. Like, wait, right, we need tables. Last please. one. Last one, yeah, I have to say, come to my bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's it called? It's, uh, it's called Bura Bura, uh -huh. uh, which, means, which means hanging out in Japanese. Ah, okay. So it's a Japanese cocktail bar. We have yeah. izakaya style food, some bar snacks. Uh, we only use uh, Japanese uh, liquors and spirits to make our cocktail. Nice. Uh, it's very intimate space, but I'm sure you will have a good time. It's down the road. I'm sure I will have a good time because it's five minutes down the street from my house. So if you guys need to know where it is, give me a holler. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Ray, thank you so much for your thank time. You, thank you, thank you so much. It's been great talking to you about thank your you podcast. So the Ray Jansen yeah. Radio, guys. Make sure you look out for that. Uh, we got to take another short break here on the program. But when we return, Rasha will be back to share with you some recap of our earlier news stories. Stay tuned.